So you're interested in the Goal Zero Venture 75, their newest portable power pack uh, that offers rugged design, waterproof capabilities, and more. So let's go ahead and get into this review, looking at the unit itself, uh, some of the pros and cons of it, and I'll try to keep this a little bit short and maybe have a few postings afterwards of videos where it's in actual usage with some of my renewable products. Okay, for the starters, um, this is the packaging that it comes in, very minimalist. Um, what it's going to come included with is the unit itself. All right, so this is the Venture 75. And additionally, it comes included with one Type A to Type C USB cable that's approximately 10 inches in length. All right, so that's everything included in the box. Uh, the box itself is going to give you um, indications of how to use and charge the unit, which I'll show here in just a brief moment. Uh, but the overlay of the device, let's go ahead and take a quick look at it. It is a rugged design where it's covered in a rubber, aluminum, and um, some sort of a plastic material that I'm sure is going to be extremely rugged in its capabilities. Additionally, one of the newest features to it is it has this silicone cover on the top. I don't know if it's silicone, but whatever it is, it's a clear unit, but that's going to be what gives part of this unit its waterproof capabilities. Now, this leads me into the first con of the unit that I can think of right off the bat. So this is supposed to be a waterproof unit where you can submerge it in water and still the, the unit is going to be protected for 30 minutes of time in shallow water. It's an IP65 rating or a 66 rating, uh, something of that nature. As a matter of fact, let's see. Um, this says that it's IP67 rated. So one meter deep, 30 minutes duration. Whereas the old model, the Venture 70, one of the, the big selling points to it was it would claim that you don't need port covers to protect it and to be waterproof. So this right here, would be exposed on the top of the unit and you wouldn't need to protect this in any way. So if water got into here, dirt got into it, you could uh, wash it out real quick and the unit would be good. Um, but that's one of the first main noticeable differences between the Venture 70 and the Venture 75. Uh, so with this Venture 75, you've got this component here to where you're gonna open that up and you can see on this, this is where it's labeling uh, the types of ports that they have. So it has two USB type A 3 amp 5 volt ports, so therefore a 15 watt maximum output. And then you have a 60 watt power delivery port, which is going to be able to both send or receive 60 watt charging uh, via DC um, capabilities. All right, so that's it for its power capabilities. Uh, so three outputs, one input and the input is a Type-C up to 60, 60 watt capability. Additionally, on the front of the unit, you're gonna have its flashlight. Uh, so with the flashlight here, it's gonna be one purpose, one design. You're gonna press and hold the power key, and that's gonna be for about two to three seconds, and then this light will come on. So I'll demonstrate it briefly. So there it is. It's a nice natural, uh, natural light to where it's gonna give you maybe more of a, a higher Cree or, or whatever that's called. Uh, but compared to the old unit, there was a little bit more function. So with the Venture 70 here, uh, let me demonstrate it. I too would click the button and then that light would come on. You have multiple mode settings to where you could do strobe, you could do SOS, and you can do bright and low light. And that included for the strobes as well. So a bright strobing and a, a lower light strobing. As you can see though, this was on the front of the unit, whereas this one's on the top of the unit. So depending on your preference there. Okay, so how do you charge this thing? So again, I spoke of the power delivery port that's inside here. So one, I've got to open this up and expose all ports while I'm charging. And then this thing is left dangling. Um, not exactly my most favorite of designs. <clears throat> but here then, you would use either the cable that came included, which is gonna be a USB type A to type C. You're gonna plug that into the power delivery port here. So let me show you that. You'd plug that into there, and then with that connection, you're probably only gonna get a maximum of 15 watts input. So I brought this out with me, which is a Nomad 7. 
the whole point of these things is so that they're solar ready. And the funny thing is, is I have multiple of the Nomad pa uh, solar panels. And so with these, they, they come in a variety of sizes. So this is the smaller one, the seven watt, uh, but this thing goes all the way up to a uh, 28 watt for this, this material type. And then they get even larger into 50 and so on. Uh, but starting at the Nomad 20, which I additionally have, which is one of their newest, it now has the type, uh, the eight millimeter port on there which then means that you could charge theoretically with all 20 watts of solar input going to whatever that device is that it's charging with. Uh, so right here I have to the side of me, I've got the Goal Zero Yeti 500X, the Yeti 200X, and the Sherpa 100AC. And with these units, they all have that eight millimeter input. This one's on the back of the unit, uh, but this one's on the front of the unit. And therefore they could take that maximum input of whatever that solar panel is going to be able to dish out up to, of course, their capacity limits, which on this one is going to be 120. This one's 100. Um, and then this one's, I think, 50. OK, so all of those have that capability there. This one, it's maximum input from the solar panels, unless you're using something like this as a go between, is going to be 10 watts max, it's going to be five volts. Um, at two amps, and that's provided by the USB outputs that all those nomads for the most part have, which is a type A connector that you would be able to use the provided cable with. You would just go ahead and connect that right here. And with these two together, you would of course plug into the unit itself, open this up to the sun, and now you've potentially got your charging capabilities. Uh, now by it being solar ready, supposedly one of the benefits of that is going to be that even with lower voltage and amperage, this thing will still try to maximize every bit of juice that's being sent to it. So for that part, this is why you would want a solar ready one of these as opposed to a generic portable battery pack uh, to pair up with maybe one of these solar panels. Uh, but very recently, I also just got a Tex Energy wind turbine that's a portable unit where I was hoping to be able to connect something like this to it out in the, the elements. I could be charging at nighttime and my unit that I carry puts out up to 28 watts. However, this thing's only going to be able to take up to 10 watts. So a little bit of a shortfall here, a uh, bit of a shame. However, it can, with the right type of input, take a full 60 watts of charging, which that is awesome. Uh, so in terms of total milliamps, this is 19,200 milliamp hours of stored battery power capabilities. Um, and then in terms of total wattage, uh, total watt hours, that is, it's 72 watt hours, which is uh, plane safe. So you can bring this on a plane. This is going to be a powerhouse. You don't have to worry about it. You can toss it to the side. It's going to be a, a beast for you. You get a flashlight included, uh, water hits your pack or something like that. You don't care. Um, that's what this is supposed to be designed for. Uh, so I think in that element, it's awesome. This thing can charge to full in an hour and a half. And I've done it already. So it's, uh, it's a great unit, but you might want to invest in the proper power adapter to charge it with. So unless you're buying one of these types of units, you, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Now here's another scenario that's come up. Again, I have these units to the side of me, um, and this is a good demonstration. If I plug in that USB Type-C PD port to this 60 watt PD port or this 60 watt PD port, none of these three devices tell you which way that power is going to go. So supposedly it's going to do a power balance. So 50% here, 50% here, they might start stop charging each other. Uh, but I haven't really seen that happen. What it does, it seems to favor one uh, one product or the, or the other to send power one way or the other. Now with the Sherpa 100 AC, there's a solution to it since this is so sophisticated, you can actually control those power delivery ports to choose automatically or output only or input only for those 60 watt PD ports. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So in a technicality, I can grab my Nomad panels, 
I can go ahead and plug up that eight millimeter port here, and then I can do pass through charging to this. And then I can get that maximum rate of 60 watts here. This would be taking a maximum of 50 watts in from the sun, uh, but at least still replenishing to some point. Now pass through charging, I'm, I'm diminishing my battery cycles at the same time of doing this, but hey, that's, that's kind of the, the nature of this scenario. So ultimately, um, is this a product that I would recommend? Absolutely, yes. Does it have its shortfalls? Absolutely, yes. That port on the top, that's a, that's a big one. I, I don't care for it whatsoever because I feel like I'm gonna rip it off. It seems durable. I mean, this is a thicker piece of plastic right there, so it doesn't look like it's just gonna tear off easily. However, whenever you're charging it, whenever you're charging something, you have to expose it and at that point it becomes vulnerable. And if that's the case, technically this could be just good enough. You know, obviously it's a much difference uh, in terms of output capabilities and power storage. I could put this in a Ziploc bag. I can put it in a watertight bag and this has the same waterproofing capabilities as this unit right here. All right, so when it's not in use, it's waterproof. When it is in use, you're vulnerable at that point. So maybe something to consider, something to think of um, when you're considering the purchase. And then lastly, it's an expensive unit. Um, again, 72 watt hours of, of storage. You can charge a laptop off of this thing. It's a beast. Bring the right adapter. You can plug from a wall and get 60 watts into it. Charge this thing up to an hour and a half and you've got you know, 10 charges of your smartphone uh, to be brought portably with you. And I just bought an Anchor 60 watt uh, Nano 2, and I'm excited to get it and pair this up with this, and then I'll be able to charge the thing up in a breeze. All right, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you like the video, please like, subscribe. Let me know what you think of this unit. If you would spend the money for it, I think it's 120. I had to pay $125 out here in Hawaii. Um, I will put this into some product testing of using it out in the elements as far as charging both with my solar panels that I have um, and then hopefully also my Tex Energy wind turbine so you could see other renewable capabilities to charge when the grid goes down if you will or whatever emergency elements that you want to consider. So again if you like please give me the thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe, hopefully I can get more of these products like this and continue to share. Thanks guys, I appreciate you, peace and mahalo.